But the winner of this match will then play the winner of the Strickland Gentile match to see who who's in the, who goes to the hot seat of the tournament. Yeah, I'm looking over at that match right now. There's still quite a few balls on the table. I don't believe anybody. As a matter of fact, I can kind of see the ball count a little bit, and uh, both players have balls on their side, and there's a lot of balls on the table. So if I had to guess, I would say the score is about 2 2, just as a guess. But, you know, the winner the of this match game. is what, guaranteed at least fourth place or something? Or? Uh, that would be the uh, final two. Fourth, yeah. Well, <laughs> again, Ephraim, Ephraim didn't break him that well. I no. mean, I mean, uh, he left uh, Corey a very easy out on the break. Uh, Corey's gonna, Corey's gonna kick in and uh, leave him uh, right behind the eight ball. He's gonna kick right into the one ball, or, or follow off the nine, behind the one and eight ball. No, I don't think he'll follow off the nine. The <laughs> nine will go into the two, but I believe he'll kick into the one and eight. Very exciting matches. I mean, this is really, I mean, both matches that were the, the two, you know, the two matches that they're undefeated. Hill Hill, like you said, is just, uh, this is really, the, the, but the whole tournament's been a lot. It's been a great tournament. I don't like this because that 8-1 billiard is available, you know, or if, he does, if he shoots off the 15. I don't really like that shot at all. This is the this is the e shot that uh, and he executed it very well. I mean, I think Ephraim, what he'd really like to do if there was a way to come off and fan the one and bring the cue ball. If he can bring the cue ball between the 15 and 7 going up there, but I don't think he could, I don't know if he could hit the one that thin, you know, spinning the cue ball between the 15 and 7 that I think no, he's I, looking at right now. He can't do that. Okay. He well, that's that. what he's looking at. He, he might be trying to take a scratch and do that by not saying it. You know, what he would like to do is, uh, possibly kick to the side rail, to the other side rail, and then to the stack, but I don't think that's available. He may end up just shooting at the cue ball like in between the rail and the eight ball here. Yeah, he's going to try to ticky the, uh, ticky this. No, no, just like that. Take, yeah, he made a nice shot. And limiting what, uh, what Duel can do with the one. The poor break put him in this position, right? The, I mean, this is all from the poor break. Yeah. On dual, the uh, only thing he can do is elevate and uh, just move the one a little bit, you know. And when, when Efren comes back to the table, he'll have a couple different options to uh, to put dual in a little more trouble. Shot. Good shot. Okay, now he'll he might be able to play your shot by coming off the eight and going in between the one and the seven. And from I, you know I'm trying to think what Corey would do back at him if he does do this and leave him up there because you know he doesn't have that ball as close to his hole as he did before, Efren. So. Go between the rail and the one. Well, getting. I mean, I, I, with the cue ball that close to the rail, I don't know. I don't know if uh, Corey would shoot it, but you know, if it was off the rail, I could see Corey shooting. I now don't know Corey, how well it's laying the 15 into the one. Yeah, I like that shot. I think Corey likes that shot too. 
and then he can force the cue ball straight down. I think he'll uh, move some balls toward his pocket with that shot. Uh, I know he likes that idea. I think, uh, you know, the way it's laying, I don't know. I think he has to cut the 15 a little bit towards one. That's why he's not uh, looking at like he's, you know, the angle he has, he has to cut the 15 more towards the one. Yeah, if, he, if that's true, then he may not shoot it. But yeah. uh, if, it, if it's laying reasonably well, I, I like that shot. But then again, this is Hill Hill game, you know, so he might be playing a little more careful. I'm looking over at the Chris uh, Gentile Earl Strickland match. All the balls are up table, and uh, I can't really see the score here, but you know. But it looks like Chris is leading the game. Earl just made a nice bank. Uh, it looks like it could be a three-three. Strickland just made a nice bank on Chris Gentile with all the balls up table. There we go. Okay. I don't know, Bill. Wow, look at this shot. Yeah. Look at this shot. Pretty nice little shot. I mean, uh, yeah. Ephraim, uh, <laughs> his hands full here. What? He has to do something. He's going he's gonna to make the 15 with the nine, and he has to make sure the nine moves. Another nice shot in return. Yeah. He's looking to do something to, uh, you know, to hit the two with speed into the stack, move the balls to his side, and get the cue ball, control the cue ball to come down, not leaving Ephraim a bank on the five. But if he hits this ball with enough speed, he will rearrange these balls. I don't think he's looking to do that. I think he's looking to come off the eight. Oh, yeah, I, oh. I think he's looking to come off the eight here, try to get that five ball close to his pocket. Reposition the cue ball, maybe perhaps underneath the one. You got to have real good cue ball speed to shoot that shot. You know, I don't think the two ball offers him any uh, anything good. And the, the angle that he's left with on the eight ball looks like it's a little bit too steep to play that shot I described. So therefore, if he shoots the eight and it banks it toward the five, he's got to hit it with the speed to, for the five to fall short of the, of the pocket. And the cue ball will then come back, go up table behind the one. He really won't accomplish a lot, but there's really not a lot that the table's offering at the, from this position. And when the table doesn't offer a lot, then you try to force something, 
that's when you make your uh, that's when you make the mistake you know give what the table offers you right now the table offers you the the shot on the eight oh he's, he's yeah, looking he's to kick looking it now. to kick the eight and uh, No, he's I left Ray as a bank on the one, the that's the for five. sure. And he may five. have left, pardon me? Excuse me, and the five too, Bill, I believe. Well, I don't know, because look at the look at the angle that he has on the table. Banking it on the five, I don't like that shot. I like the one better than the five. I think he's going to end up banking the one here, and then he's going to use the seven as a blocker. You know, going back to the last, uh, going back to the last shot, I, I just, uh, you know, it just seemed like that two was laying. I guess it was, it wasn't laying that well. Or Corey probably would have shot it to bank that two and get balls on his side. I mean, you know, now he's in ball, such a bad position. The two ball wasn't any good, Larry. Okay. Okay. I kind of like the one here. Play good pocket speed with the one. Don't, don't really try to shoot to make it. Play good pocket speed with the one and lengthen out the cue ball with left hand English using, you know, the English to, to create distance. Yeah, you have the seven to cover up. The right. seven is really, now, you, know, you have the seven and the two. Right, now you, you know, now you created, just, now you don't want him to see the he one. He sees the one and that's see, what he didn't that's want. That's why I say you got to play good pocket speed with the one. That's where Ephraim isn't isn't uh, executing as well as he you know, as well as he could. No, as well as he used to. <laughs> he may well. be, he may be executing <laughs> as well as he can, but he's not executing as well as he, he used, used to, to. execute. <laughs> this is not the Ephraim of uh, when he was 30, 35 years old, you know, or twenty five to thirty five. This is the F from 55. 57. 57. Quite a bit of a difference. Quite a bit of a difference. Well, he changed the whole game. No, he's okay. Well, he's going to cut the seven. No, if we can kick behind the one, he's not going to cut the seven. He can kick softly behind the one. That's a good view there. Nice view. Let's keep this view through the entire shot. See how nice and softly he kicks this. He's going to use the one to block the the, uh, the nine with, or in hopes that he will. Now Corey, I believe, can hit off. Now he's going to use the. No, he's looking at something else. But it looks like he's going to do something with the two. Come off the two ball. I don't know if he can hit the two. The eight may be in the way. Matt, to just get behind the Corey and take a look at the eight in relation to the two. You see no, the he can't in the say way. it right. So he's uh, okay. He just banked his nine ball long here, and you try to go behind the two. He don't like that shot. He wants to go behind the nine here. Nope, he's going to go uh, and hit the two. That's the shot I saw, but he, he really he came off the stack and didn't and, do now it. He's left on the six here, okay? He's going to shoot the six. Cue ball's going to then go into the eight, and it's not going to scratch. It's going to hit the eight thickly enough to go to the bottom cushion and then toward the one. Yeah, that was a big mistake on Corey's part. You know, letting the cue ball, hitting it a little too hard. You know, he had the shot. The shot laid well, but he just he hit it, uh, you know. Now here's a situation hard. where he can't reach it right-handed, and he can't even reach it left-handed. See, he can't reach it either with either hand. So it looks like he's going to be forced to get the bridge out. He likes the shot. This is the correct shot. Unless he plays it off the nine. He's shooting left-handed. He's going to play it off the nine. That's what he's doing. Boy, Corey, that that mistake is going to probably. He will regret that mistake. Let's get an overhead here and take a look at the way the balls are positioned. He might play eight five and then try to get on the two. 
And I don't think he's going to try to go into the stack. That's certainly not the correct no. thing. He's going to try to get the balls that are loose. It'll give him the lead in this final game, and then he can outmaneuver or outmanage Corey from that position. I agree with you, Bill. He's going to go two rails up, or is he coming no, back? No, he's going to go about, oh, around the nine here. Yeah. Two rails, two rails up right there. Now he wanted to get much further up. Now he's got, he, you know, where he would be able to. Yeah, uh, he wanted the uh, the angle to go, to be much straighter on the nine. Now he's going to have to send the uh, the nine possibly, excuse me, the two possibly into the balls with a high ball, and he may end up with a shot of the 13 here. If he shoots the nine with a high ball, and he sends the two into the stack, he could end up with a shot in the 13. Try to draw right off this. Uh, no, with a high ball. With the high ball. Not what he wanted to do. No. Nope. Let's take a look at the overhead here and take a look at that's it. Okay, what I would do if I were he, I would bank the 10 into the pink four, draw the cue ball behind the one. That shot, you know, he stays in control of the table, he protects his lead, and he could reposition the four ball near his pocket. Four or the 10 off the, oh, uh, yeah, the, the 10, 10 ball, ball off the this. 10 ball near his pocket. No. He didn't do anything that I described. No, he, he didn't reposition the cue ball behind the one. He didn't hit the ball accurately enough to put the 10 ball near his pocket. I'm talking about this guy, Reyes, is a great player, but I think Father Time has really caught up with him. You know? I mean, that's been evidence in not only this particular match, but in other matches and other tournaments. Because Reffin Reyes, a five, even five, six years ago, Corey would have been toast by now. Really. That particular shot would have been gin. Like, you know solidly behind the one, 10 ball near his pocket, and Corey would have been scratching his head. No, yeah, I'm, talking about a, I'm talking about a shot that was relatively easy to execute. Yeah. You yeah. know, there was nothing I, hard about that shot. No, either, was, either he's tired and he really didn't put forth the effort that was necessary for that shot, or he just is losing his his, his cue ball uh, uh, control and accuracy. Yeah. You know, in either case, it's not good. I'll tell you, if I shot this shot, my focus would be on just making sure the cue ball got behind the one. Everything else is a bonus. Look at this shot. Look well, at this shot. Well, that's about the eighth time or seventh or eighth time that, he he, kicked the ball. that he's opted to kick in this match. And you know what? Every time he's opted to kick, he has hit the kick reasonably well. That time he hit it perfectly. He has a shot on the one here. And come back up for the uh, two ball. Ephraim may not even get back to the table. No, it's very possible. But Ephraim has four and Corey has two. Corey needs six balls. And they're you know, laying. They're all right there. From the position that Reyes was in with the lead four to nothing, and with a reasonably good shot, you know, to create a good position or reasonable position, you would have thought that this game was really pretty much in his control. But to see him shoot that shot, and Corey turn this game around. Look what Corey did here. Oh boy, he just he beat the scratch. I I think I believe the. Uh, I believe the seven goes by, but he, he no. Billy, he elected to go around the whole table to get over there instead of trying to come up. I don't, I don't think the seven goes by. Well, he tr he played what he thought was, was the best way to get to the next ball. I know how the way he played it. I know the way he played it, you know? So he has to shoot the two here, it looks like. He's gonna go into the three if he shoots the two. He's not gonna like that unless he hits the top, top side of the three. And, and shooting the shot with a natural level stroke, I don't think he's going to hit the top. He's going to have to elevate a little bit here. And you have to be careful not scratching in the side here. I think, I think he's shooting this shot. With he's shooting speed. the pink four. That's what he's doing. And now he's gotten to a position where he wants to shoot the 14. 
is you're going to have to elevate over to 13, which is going to hamper his bridge and also with somewhat of his sighting of the shot. I see Corey making the shot. Yeah. Okay, now and he's coming he's back down table. It may be a little bit too hard. It may be freezing on the seven there, but he was able to get away from that. Now, once again, this is very marginal. He can cut the two in. He would like to go cross table, but, you know, going cross table and missing that 10 and hitting the other side of the side pocket doesn't lay natural. So he's going to have to do something a little bit extra here. With you having, well, ball counts five to four, uh, you know, I think that he's going to have to hit this ball with a little bit of inside, inside English, but not much. Because if he ends up hitting the 10, he's not going to end up with a shot. He wants to use a little bit of inside English, miss the 10, and then go to the side reel above the side pocket, and then back across table for either the 10 or the 3. This is a difficult shot. Score. Four, game, four, uh, four balls for Duel, five for Reyes, and this is Hill-Hill game. A lot of pressure oh on this boy. shot. A lot of pressure here. So whatever he, he does, he's going to have to make a good, you know, a wise choice here because this decision here may be the tournament. Excuse me, may be the match or possibly even the tournament. You know, the winner of this match will play for the for the hot seat, and so it's very likely that we'll see the winner of this match in the finals. Well, this shot, you know, to shoot the two here, you know, he does have a shot. He does have a way. If he didn't feel like shooting the two, he didn't feel comfortable with it. He does have a safety No, he's here. going to shoot the two. Okay. Oh, forget about him not shooting the okay, two. Okay, he's shooting the two. He's shooting the two. Oh, he went in between the three and the ten. Now, that was, you see, the reason he went in between the three and the ten was a dual reason. By going in between the three and the ten, he hits it with a natural ball, which increases his accuracy. So he traded off position play for accuracy. Now he's got a long shot, but at least the ball the ball count is tied up at five apiece. Six to four, Corey uh, ball count. Corey oh, needs is. Corey needs two balls. Okay, excuse me. The ball counts six to yeah, four. So okay. I mean, but no, every no, shot is, like you say, in a heavily pressure situation. I mean, he has to come with this shot, and he's going to also try to, well, he can make it. It'll be a free shot because no. he's going forward. What he wants to do here is cinch the hill ball, yeah. okay? Cinch the hill ball and then put a ball out of play, get back to the table, put another ball out of play, and then you know, just outmanage, outmanage Reyes, you know, with him being in the one hole. Yeah. That's why I like dual in this in this final game. I just thought that he just had, you know, he had no, more you were momentum, 100% right. had more energy. He just was playing better than Reyes. Oh, he has the shot here. He's going to two rail. He's on the hill. He's on the hill. He's going to two rail this 12 ball, come down to the bottom rail. No, he's not going to come down to the bottom rail. He wants to stay on the side rail. Staying on the side rail, he gives up nothing. See the rail over there? Gives up nothing. If he comes down to the bottom rail, he may give up a bank on the seven. He don't want to come down to the bottom rail. He wants to end up giving him nothing to shoot at. And staying on the side rail by the first diamond, between the diamond and the pocket, is the correct position for the cue ball. This is not what I would the, Now, the reason this shot is no good is because he can hit it good. It can double the point, sell out a cross-corner bank, and he can lose the game. That's what he can't afford to have happen. There's only a couple ways he can lose the game from here, okay? And that was one of them. So he wants to stay on the Perfect, side rail. Yep. 
Okay, now staying on the side rail, he doesn't give up a shot, and he's forcing Reyes to play an up table game. So he wants to put a couple more balls out of play. Now he can shoot that shot that he may sell out the ball with if he misses it because the balls right, will balls be out are of play. Up table, of course. Actually, he did leave him a shot where, well, it's still, I mean, but he could just shoot, he will bank the 10 and draw the cue ball back. No, he's not going to do that. I, he may do that. I wouldn't do that. He may do that, but I would because, once again, he could he, double. He could, right. Yeah. I would shoot the 7 and follow the cue ball. I wouldn't give him a bank on the, third, on the 12 ball. I would shoot the 7 and follow the cue ball to the side pocket or somewhere around that area. He's, he's looking to come back. If he comes back to this area on the table, the first diamond on the short reel near Reyes's pocket, or, or near Dole's pocket, he has to hit the seven ball hard. And how is he going to control this seven ball, shooting it with that, with that speed? I don't think he can. I like shooting the seven ball and following the cue ball, not giving up a shot at all. Yeah, I like that, putting it on the long rail, just putting it towards the... Uh just putting it on the back rail, where he doesn't have a bank on the 13 nor the 7. Okay, now he's opting to shoot the 10. I don't like this shot, because he can lose with this shot. If the balls were up table all the way, then it's a whole different, you know, scenario. But now with the balls laying like that ball, Ephraim, uh, <laughs> if he had a shot at his pocket, him running four from there. Isn't that There's unlikely? one other shot he can shoot here. He can shoot the seven into the 12, okay? If he shoots the seven into the 12, he can, in the, on the outside of the 12, both balls will then go to his side, and he can draw the cue ball back I like that. Table. I like that. I like whatever to get the cue ball down to this end, right? you know, down to the bottom rail frozen if possible and I, that's what I would like see that shot will actually put two balls kind of out of play and he can shoot, shoot the seven into the 12 and I draw believe, the cue ball I believe that's what he's doing now he's looking at it so he can he can he can hit either side of the 13 if that's the 13 or the 12 that's the 12 I believe okay and, but but most importantly, get the cue ball back down table to the side. That's there exactly okay. what he okay. did. Okay. That's what he did. That's what he did. And actually, uh, you know, this ball came down like this. He didn't. You know, there's a difference of having that cue ball for you know closer to the bottom rail. Okay. Now he, if he played unlucky here, let's get the angle on back of Reyes and see if he has a shot on that 13. See that 13 up up beyond you know the other side of the table. Let's see if he has it. Now we got to get a little further to the right. To see if he has, uh, and maybe to the left. Uh, yeah, we don't even have to get to the left to see if he has a, okay. Now, this is okay, man. He can only get one ball with this shot. He can only get one ball with that shot, so that was okay. Well, he gave Corey, okay. he gave Corey a shot at now winning Duel the game. Now, can shoot the 10, okay? Shooting the 10 in this instance is a lot different than shooting it before because we have the 7 out of play and the 12 relatively out of play. The 13 kind of like out of play, but not really. But shooting the 10 now is a very he's good shooting, possibility. He's shooting the and 13. And I look for him to do that. He's shooting the well, 13. Well, Yeah, one right. Well, if he even he could just lag this ball and just make sure he doesn't uh, leave the shot. Yeah, with the 10 ball there, That's he gets a lot of cover. Shot because what he did with that shot, he really put two balls out of play now. So yeah. now he can really shoot it in his pocket now, you know, well, what he wants to do anyways. He can really shoot it in his pocket now because both the seven and the 12 ball out of play will give him that courage. Say, oh, I'll shoot this, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, exactly. with, and with accuracy, because he'll really be comfortable now. 
Okay, Reyes is too smart for that. Okay, he's going to put balls in play. Yeah. Freezing he's the cue put ball. Balls in play. Leaving no shot. Right. Now, you know what, what Duel has to do? Duel actually has to bank the seven down the table, put all four balls back down and play. No, he has to bank it. He's froze on it, so he has to really be careful of fouling here, too. Now, Reyes is standing over Duel, so his presence alone is putting pressure on Duel. Now, once, uh, once the uh, tournament director or the referee comes over to, you know, to watch or supervise or to watch this shot, that puts more pressure on Duel. Here we go. So Du has no choice. He must put this ball back in play. That was a foul. That to me was a foul. The cue ball went forward. Uh, uh, unless it was frozen. They were frozen. If it was frozen, they frozen. If they was frozen, then they don't call that a foul. But if the, you know, if they weren't frozen, that was clearly a foul. It was frozen. Or Ephraim, well, you know, Ephraim clearly would not <laughs> go any further. Now Reyes, look, watch his shot. He must get behind those balls. He must get, oh, oh my. It's frozen he, again. He, he must get, that's oh, it. Boy. If he don't get behind the balls or frozen to the seven, you lose. He just lose. That's it. That's, that's, a, what a shot. I could tell. <laughs> With the with the camera work, I could tell that it's froze better than if I was standing right over it. Okay, now Duel has a shot. This is the, what Duel should do. Duel should softly shoot away from the seven, hard enough so the seven hits the thirteen to the rail, but not hard enough to sell out a shot on the ten or the nine. He has to shoot away from the seven, and give up his position. He must give up his position or run the risk of losing the game. If he tries to get fancy here and tries to reposition the cue ball on the other side of the nine, he may end up losing two balls with this shot. I'll tell you, he needs one. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he's in a bad spot. I mean, he's in he's such a bad spot. How would you like to be at this spot? I would. Oh, well. He needs one ball. Come on, give me a break. So you're talking, Billy, you go up table here? No, I, I say don't. It just, uh, I, I already explained to you what I would do. I would shoot away from the seven and shoot this and hit the seven hard enough to hit the 13 to the cushion, but not hard enough to sell out a shot on the 10 or the 9. Okay. That way, he doesn't foul. He doesn't give up a shot, but he may lose his position. But he can afford to lose his position because he only needs one ball. He's taking a scratch. He's kicking at the seven. He's kicking at the seven. He's kicking at the seven. How did he hit it? Okay. That's what he was doing, kicking at the seven. Can you imagine how much confidence he must have with his ability to kick for him to shoot that shot. Yeah. I believe That's going against all one pocket principles. Do you, do you think he was thinking about trying to make the seven or just make sure he came well, into the seven was, or 13? That's well, he what was he really, making sure that yeah, he's he, favoring actually the 13 side mm -hmm. because if he misses the seven, it's the 13, he's in great shape. He may even win the game by pocketing the seven. A shot that I really didn't even consider as an option. Yeah, his ex cue ball control. Corey Dill's cue ball control. It just, uh, you know, never uh, stops to amaze me. Well, Braves is going to have to go to the side cushion and kick the seven softly. He has no options there. He's going to try to freeze him again. Well, he's not going to freeze him. He can't freeze him. And he can't shoot it hard. And when he does that, you know what Duel's going to do? He's going to bank the 10. <laughs> That's what he's going to do. It's like, pay me now or pay me later. That's it. Reyes is saying to himself, I got to get that 13 close to my hole. 
But he can't because he'll scratch. So what can he do? Oh, my goodness. I don't know. Uh, he's got to he's gotta hope that Corey faints when he bangs the tent. <laughs> Billy, how about, okay, I guess he doesn't I mean, have it. You know, doesn't it look? Okay. Oh, that was a great shot. Okay. Okay, okay, that's an option that I didn't consider. But how about how about he took out the thank ten you. ball? Thank how you. about look uh, where only the, thank you, Mr. Reyes. Okay. Okay, where's <laughs> Billy, look where the seven ball stopped that took out the bank on the ten ball. I mean not that he chewed it uh, with the you know, nine ball there, but <laughs> great shot. Great shot. That was probably one of the better shots he's made in this match, I mean, especially in this game, you know, which has really bought him a ticket to uh, to last a little longer, perhaps even win this game in the match. Exactly. Possibly win the game. <laughs> in the match, yeah. right? 3-3. Three, three. Exactly. So now Duel once again has to be careful because Reyes becomes a threat again. With that shot, he becomes a legitimate threat, no question. <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at different options. I mean, uh, he's coming off the 13. He has to bring the cue ball all the way back down here. And he's going to hit the point, and well, he might sell you, out the game. I'm going to tell you something. There was there no was reason a... for him to do that. You know, he don't. He didn't need a spectacular shot. That was a, a spectacular shot that was unnecessary. He could have scratched on the side. He hit the point and didn't scratch on the side, so we'll probably survive. You know, but he's not going to really like it when when it, when no. Ray's is when he Ray's leaves the table because he had a big advantage. Now to see his advantage shrink to like minuscule minuscule here i mean he's going to Reyes is probably going to follow this ball three cushions and in, in play shape for the seven watch i'll tell you i thought uh, you know going back to what's the best scenario hill hill and needing one ball i think that's what we're going to get right here here we got it okay now Reyes is going to be shot. now Reyes <laughs> is going to be shooting the 13 ball bank to win the match yep so this actually, this match, this game, <laughs> this match has really developed into like not the last the ball. The last ball. You can't get more exciting <laughs> exactly. than this. Exactly. This is a great match. I mean, from look at the momentum swing here. You know, when 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 you thought that Corey Duell couldn't have possibly lost this match, now he's an underdog. Now he's an underdog, and if you can get a picture right now of Corey's face, you'll see it all over his face. How, how he looks. Yeah, from, uh, oh, uh, did he hit this too soft? Uh, he did he hit it too good soft? Speed, good Reyes speed. is going to advance. Look at this. this match. Oh, okay. Unbelievable. What a shot. That's unbelievable. What a shot. Uh, I, I mean, for Reyes to win this match wow, from Bill. the position that Corey had him in was unbelievable. That was unbelievable. To get the two balls out of Corey's pocket like that and move him up table and put him in play. That was great. Magician, Billy, that's 30, that's his game 25 years ago. <laughs> uh, um, you know, and, and yes. Corey actually gave him this match because he wanted to shoot a spectacular shot. Instead of doing something simple, simple. and run the risk of maybe selling out a ball or possibly two, he tried to do something spectacular, and it wasn't a fair trade-off. Right. Corey's, it. Corey's still shooting the shot to find out how he didn't hit it well enough. <laughs> so, well, the match, the match that's still uh, the, the other winner side match with Chris Gentile and Earl, they're still in that match there. So, um, I don't know. Chris might be shooting the. Chris might be shooting. I mean, there's two balls on the table in Chris Gentile's and Earl Strickland's match. Okay, I'm not sure who needs one, but there's two balls on the table, Billy. And Earl Strickland and Chris Gentile's match. Okay, and to see who plays Efren Reyes. Really, you're still amazed about Efren Reyes. You've been watching it more than anybody ever. You've seen more of Efren do that. You know, you've seen it. 
Well, you know, you really can't get more excitement. No, you that really was... can't get. I mean, I mean, a lot of great shots. <laughs> a lot of great shots in that in the in that match in that game. You know, I mean, I mean, we can we can debate back and forth endlessly about what he should have done or what he, he could have done. You know, but he played well enough to go three three and get seven balls in the last game of the match. So, right. you know, you could look back into in, in to, to that game to a lot of different shots and opportunities both players had to either win or, lo or lose the match.